It's a good day to be a buyer. Maybe a good day is a little bit of an overreach, but it's surely a better day. 33.9% increase in inventory levels in 28 days in the single family market and 14.6% increase in the condo market. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and we're going to talk about some relevant current events. Last week, I asked if future home sellers should be well, getting worried. Not yet, but there is no hiding that our inventory levels, well, they're starting to jump. Now, to be fair, this week we always see a big jump in new listings as people rush to get their house on the market before Memorial Day weekend. While new listings going into Memorial Day weekend, they're always down. There will be a pullback in next week's report, but then the question becomes, how many more weeks are we going to see inventory growth? Generally, it's until the run-up of July 4th, and then it stays steady. Time will soon tell, but future sellers may be starting to get well, a little squirmy sitting in those chairs. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. Our real quick highlight reel, we buy houses all over Massachusetts. You know it, but it's for cash and as is condition. Reach out or visit Cash Offer MA for more information. And we have officially launched our purchased power plan. Buyers can now pay for our services by the hour instead of 2.5% or 3% of the purchase price. This can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and want to save a small fortune in fees. And not to leave sellers out of the party, we are now piloting a pay by the hour seller program. The pilot program consists of three sellers. So if you're interested in learning more and possibly saving thousands upon thousands of dollars when selling, then reach out. Let's jump into the single family market stat. Look at that chart and that jump in inventory. The spring has been an aggressive run up in inventory levels, very similar to what we saw in the spring of 2022, except we don't have the pressure of a quickly increasing interest rate environment like we did back then. We now have 4,590 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 33.9% more homes on the market than just 28 days ago. We would now have to go back to the week of November 11th in order to find a time when there was actually more inventory on the market than there is today. These inventory levels, they're going to continue to climb, so be ready. Now, the inventory gap grew to the highest amount year to date when compared to 2023 inventory levels. We now have 782 more houses on the market when compared to the same time back last year. 547 more houses on the market when compared to this time back in 2022. This was a big week for new listing activity, a big, big week. The last time we listed more houses was the week of June 27th in 2022 when 1,796 single-family houses came on the market. This week, we listed 1,601 single-family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 264 units or 19.8% more than the same week back in 2023. So two weeks ago, it was 173 more units. And last week, was 111 additional units. And now 264 new listings were compared to the same week in 2023. And there, right there, is the culprit for our big inventory growth. Meanwhile, that four-week rolling average is 1,205 new listings. Year over year, new listings still blowing it out of the park. But under agreements are coming right at last year's levels. This week, we put 1,093 single-family homes under agreement. Now, this is 37 units of 3.5% higher than the same week last year when 1,056 single-family homes went under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average is 1,041 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 19.8%. Under agreements were only up by 3.5%. We have 1,093 units that went under agreement this week, which is compared to the 1,193 new listings from two weeks ago. This means our pendings to new listing ratio was 91.62% this week. This was a great number, so it was a big jump from last year's 82.5%. However, the level was 97.6% this week last year. I think this number is becoming more and more valuable as it's calling the shot that inventory, well, it's going to continue to build. Now, the average for last year's four weeks is 89.8%. This is compared to the five through eight weeks where it was 98.3%. There were 722 single-family homes that sold last week for an average sales price of $839,000 and an immediate sales price of $669,000. So sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 33.5% as there were 541 single-family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $804,000. That's now seven out of the last eight weeks where the average sales price has been over $800,000. And now 
this is the last time I'm going to say that stat because it's kind of the new norm. Home prices over 800 grand. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory, it shot up to 2.36 months from last week's 2.11 months. The 2.36 months this week is compared to the 1.95 months this week last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now on to the condo market. The steady at the increase market segment made a big jump this week. We now have 2,710 condos on the market as of Monday. This means that there was 14.6% more inventory on the market today than inventory just 28 days ago. Now, last week, we took a step back, and this week, well, we're right back at it. We now have 383 more units on the market today than today last year, 313 more units than when compared back in 2022, and are now only 23 units short when compared to the inventory levels of 2021. There were 631 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 566 units. Now, the 631 units listed was 15 units or 2.4% more than the 616 condos that came on the market this week back in 2023. Last week, it was 13 more units, and now this week, it's 15 more units. Kind of a trend. This week, we put 467 units under agreement. This 467 condo sales was 31 units or 6.2% less than last year when we put 498 condos under agreement. That uh, four-week rolling average for under agreements, that's 474 units. So 2.4% more listings over here that came on the market. While compared to this week last year, we sold 6.2% fewer condos. The condo pendants to new listing ratio was 89.5%. This was a nice rebound week, just like we saw back in the single family market. But this is compared to the 97.8% that were recorded this week last year. This just shows that the condo market is also weaker than last year, just like the single family market. The average for the last four weeks is 85.3%, which is compared to 84.3% for weeks five through eight. Now, there were 331 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $672,000 and a median sales price of $550,000. This same week, last year, there were 290 condos that sold. So the sales levels were down by 14.1%. Months of inventory made a big jump up this week to 2.84 months from last week's 2.71 months. This is compared to the months of inventory of 2.4 months this week last year. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. It just plays at that YouTube algorithm. And if you're liking the content, then I truly appreciate you considering subscribing because that one doesn't hurt either. Time to talk about interest rates. Interest rates look down slightly, and I do mean ever so slightly, but hey, we're going to take whatever we can get, right? It's a pretty light week when it comes to the economic calendar. I don't really see too much that would be an interest rate mover. The next piece of data that could move a market comes next week with the GDP numbers. Now, let's be thankful for some rate stability. I'm positively thankful for it, but did you see this? This was just crazy. It now takes $177,798 for a family of four to live comfortably in the United States. But that's nothing. That's in the United States. The study revealed that in the most expensive states, families needed nearly $300,000 to simply live comfortably. And it gets worse because the study determined that Massachusetts is the most expensive state and it takes a mind-blowing $301,184 a year for a family of four to live comfortably. Meanwhile, the average annual salary in the United States is $59,528 and $65,752 if you're in Massachusetts. The least expensive state was Mississippi with $177,798 for a family of four to live comfortably. And I hate to say it, but this is going to get worse. Inflation, it's not going away. Inflation is what happens when you borrow or otherwise known it. For it, $1 trillion every 100 days. It's out of control. And if you and me and everyone else on Main Street that's paying for the irresponsibility of the federal government and all the rich men north of Richmond, I get asked relatively often why I'm so bullish on real estate. It's a simple answer. Home prices are going to go up because of the inflation that we just talked about. Again, I point to what happened in the 1970s. And so far, we have been going toe to toe with that historical trend. Retirement savings are down, and it's going to get worse, by the way, as our daily expenses continue to grow and we continue to get pinched. 
The median retirement savings for Americans stands at $87,000. This is compared to the 1.46 million that is considered the ideal savings target for retirement. And yet, this figure is up from 1.27 million last year. We can thank the inflationary pressures for that big jump on that one. Now, this chart really gives a good visualization as to where we stand based off of our age. We are behind, and it will be the houses that we call home today, which will be our retiring saving grace. The long-term benefits of home ownership will weekly pay off when it's time to retire. 30 to 40 years of paying down your mortgage and values continuing to rise, it's gonna be the difference maker for those looking to fill the gap of the lapse of retirement savings during these next couple of years as we're all pitched. Are you on the sidelines waiting to buy? Do your future self a favor and buy sooner instead of later. Lock in your pricing so it's a hedge against future inflation and start contributing to your retirement savings each and every single month when you pay your mortgage. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs again? It's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next 90 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you don't have anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.